The year is 1905, and the Russian Empire holds tenuous control over much of Europe. Unrest is on the rise in Warsaw, with escalating clashes between Russian soldiers, Polish townspeople, and Jewish merchants, without any regard for class boundaries. Enter Viktor Shulsky. And Viktor with a W, not a V. A prideful thaumaturge who's lost the connection to a salutor, an esoteric demon-like being. He's searching for an obscure healer named Rasputin, who's rumored to have special powers that might be able to relieve his sickness. That's the setup for The Thaumaturge, a dark isometric RPG with turn-based combat and where your choices matter. It was developed by Fool's Theory, who's best known as the studio that CD Projekt Red hired to remake The Witcher 1. Their CEO and design director are former CDPR employees, making them a natural fit for the remake. They've worked on games like Baldur's Gate 3 as a support studio, and co-developed 7, The Days Long Gone, which released in 2017 to decent reviews. The Thaumaturge is their first solo developed title, giving them a chance to spread their wings and showcase their expertise. The Witcher is an extremely popular series, and many people are wondering if the little known fool's theory has the talent required to do it justice. Hmm. Might want to look around some. Good idea, Geralt. Let's have a look around some to find out. This is my review of The Thaumaturge. I'll minimize spoilers in this review, but there will be some minor spoilers of the prologue, which is roughly the first 60 to 90 minutes of the game. I'll avoid any story spoilers from the acts that follow, though. In the Thaumaturge, you play as Viktor Shusky, the titular Thaumaturge. Thaumaturges are people who can see salutors and sense feelings or stories imprinted on everyday objects. Salutors are basically demons. They feed on people's flaws and can be found out in the wild, but as a Thaumaturge, Viktor has the ability to tame and control them. Or at least he used to. He's traveled to a small village seeking a healer named Rasputin that might be able to help him. Thankfully, the rumors were true and he's quickly able to heal Viktor. Thaumaturges can do more than just control salutors, though. They're also excellent detectives. Naturally, their power to read objects comes in handy here. Using this power, Viktor investigates why the villagers are acting so aggressively. After the mystery is solved, Victor learns that his estranged father has died. He decides to head to Warsaw for the funeral, ending the prologue. Once in Warsaw, the other major plots kick off. Warsaw is a city in turmoil under the rule of the Russian Empire. There are Polish resistance groups trying to reclaim the city. Your father, also a thaumaturge, died when a building mysteriously collapsed. Meanwhile, Rasputin has proven to be an effective ally but his intentions in Warsaw are a mystery. These major story threads progress and intersect in compelling ways to tell a story that kept me engaged throughout. Most characters of the game are merely decent, but a few do stand out. The mysterious Rasputin is an intriguing character and is based on a historically significant person. Viktor's childhood friend, Abaritsi, is a dynamic and fun character that stands apart from the rest of the largely serious cast. There are a few others that are interesting as well, but most are fairly one-dimensional. I wish that the most interesting characters had more screen time though, even if it came at the cost of cutting some of the others. A core feature that ties into this story is the Choices Matters conversation system, especially the development of Victor's flaw, Pride. During conversations, you'll often have an option to respond pridefully, rather than backing down or being more rational. Each time you respond with pride, you feed your flaw and become even more proud. This unlocks conversation options that are only available if you have enough pride built up. Conversely, as Victor's pride grows, you'll be locked out of some replies because he's just too proud to say them. If it builds up enough, some decisions will actually be made for you. I found this to be an interesting twist on the standard Choices Matter dialogue system that's used by most games. 
like those games, it locks you out of conversation options based on your choices. Except it doesn't show you what the blocked options are, just that you can't choose them due to your choices or pride level. I would have preferred knowing what the blocked dialogue was, but ultimately it's only a minor quibble. The consequences of your choices usually aren't very clear or immediate, but some show up in a big way in the final act. As I got closer to the end of the game, I had a strong feeling that some of my choices would come back to bite me in the ass. I was not disappointed. Just like I wouldn't be disappointed if you hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this review. I'd greatly appreciate it. Questing in the Thaumaturge has three different tiers. Main quests, side quests, and urban secrets. Main quests are the story missions that follow the major plot threads. You typically won't have more than a few at a time, but these are the quests that progress the story. They're mandatory, but are generally the best quests, so you'll want to do them anyways. If you want to do everything in the game, save the main quests for last, since they'll progress the story which can lock you out of other missions. Side quests are generally smaller stories that aren't tied to the main plot. They can be interesting and have significant rewards though, including optional salutors. I highly recommend doing these for both the rewards and the stories. Urban secrets are mostly just busy work. You'll do things like look at a scenic view, find hidden businesses that give you a collectible drawing, or unlocking new clothing options. They usually involve running around the city, having a look around some, I'm going to take a look around, and collecting things that have little to no story relevance. If you're a completionist, then obviously you'll want to do these, but otherwise I only recommend doing them if they happen to be on your way. While each individual task is short, with how many there are, doing them was very time consuming and mostly uninteresting to me. The method to progress quests usually involves detective work and combat. You'll use your perception ability to find clues, which lead to making conclusions and advancing the quest. For example, you discover that somebody is thinking about running away while packing a travel chest. By combining that information with other clues, you learn her fears and confront her about what you learned. This helps convince her to spill important information needed to progress the quest. Combat in the Thaumaturge is turn-based and reminiscent of JRPGs. You fight alongside your salutors, but only one salutor can act per turn. You can freely switch between salutors every turn without any penalties. Each combat action has a speed of either normal, slow, or very slow, meaning they take one, two, or three turns to execute. More powerful abilities generally take longer. Some abilities can delay or even cancel enemy actions. There are direct damage attacks, damage over time abilities, and ultimate skills. Some actions remove focus points from enemies. If an enemy loses all of their focus points, their planned action is cancelled, and both you and your salutor can use ultimates that do a lot more damage and often have other effects, such as applying damage over time to all enemies or healing half of your missing health. Enemies often have special defenses, such as damage reduction or immunity to debuffs, which can be disabled by using the salutor they are weak against, or by removing all of their focus points. These systems lead to combat feeling like a puzzle, where you're trying to take the best actions in the optimal order to maximize damage dealt and reduce damage taken. Overall, the combat was mildly entertaining, but it's more of a nice change of pace rather than a reason to play the game. I played on the middle difficulty, but combat was generally quite easy. I recommend starting on the highest difficulty and drop it down if you find it too difficult. The leveling system in the Thaumaturge is pretty simple. You progress along the skill tree's four paths, one for each dimension, heart, deed, mind, and word. You'll gain new attacks and flexible buffs that can be applied to them as you see fit. Some conversation options have dimensional level requirements, so leveling affects more than just combat. The dimension-based replies are infrequent, but they can have a big impact. During investigations, some clues have dimension level requirements to get the full picture of what's going on. Skill tree paths eventually become blocked until you tame specific salutors. This means that missing optional salutors will block your progress in that dimension. You can't quite max out the entire skill tree, even if you get all the salutors, but you can get pretty close if you're doing everything in your quest log. The Thaumaturge is an Unreal Engine 5 game. 
but it doesn't strive to be ultra-realistic. The graphics are solid, but largely unremarkable. It has a dark and gritty style that works well for the setting, though. During combat, there's a lot of camera cuts and movement to make it feel more dynamic, even if some things look a bit stiff. Similarly, cutscenes and conversations use camera switching and animations to prevent it from feeling too static. Basically, they're a small step above what you'd get in Starfield, but they won't blow you away. Music and sound effects are similarly solid, but unremarkable. The music is mostly ambient and low-key. Voice acting is a bit hit and miss. Overall, I'd say it's well done, but there are occasionally characters that sound a bit rough. Some of the characters that generally have good voice acting, such as Victor, occasionally deliver some very robotic lines. These issues were infrequent though, and didn't detract from the experience for me. In 2024, no PC game review is complete without touching on performance. I played the entire game on a high-end desktop with a RTX 4090 on max settings. If you're interested in performance on lower-end systems for future reviews, let me know in the comments down below. I haven't done thorough benchmarking, but I'm happy to report that I didn't have any noticeable performance or stuttering issues while playing in 4K. I started playing in DLSS quality mode, but after seeing some Halo artifacts and fuzziness around characters, I decided to turn it off. That didn't solve the issue, but it seemed to make it less frequent. I found that the most difficult area to render was Puvigle while it was raining. As you can see on screen now, it can sometimes dip into the 50s here. In other outdoor areas, it would consistently be in the mid 80s to lower 90s, even in crowded areas. Indoors, the FPS was even higher. Keep in mind that the numbers you're seeing on screen were while capturing gameplay footage. When I wasn't recording, the FPS was maybe about 3 to 7 frames higher than that. Unlike games like Starfield, loading screens were mercifully short and infrequent. The Thaumaturge is listed as unsupported on the Steam Deck due to performance, but it includes a Steam Deck graphics preset, and I found it to be playable in my brief testing. I don't have any capture footage from the Steam Deck, but if that's something you'd like to see in future reviews, let me know in the comments down below. What you're seeing on screen now is an approximation of Steam Deck graphics, but running at a higher FPS on my desktop. On my Steam Deck, I once again ran through Rainy Povigle. While using the Steam Deck graphics preset and FSR quality mode, my FPS was in the mid-30s and lower 40s. Lower FSR scaling options had little impact. It's not ideal, but it's the most difficult area to render, and it's a turn-based game so FPS isn't as important. Turning on frame gen enabled me to get into the 50s and even hit 60s sometimes in the same area. The graphics quality takes a hit from all this tweaking though. If you can stand the blurriness and pixelation, it could provide a smooth experience on the small screen. I personally wouldn't want to play the whole game on the Steam Deck, but it works as a supplement to a gaming PC, or if you set your expectations appropriately. If you're okay with 30 FPS, you can get a clearer image by turning off FSR entirely. I experienced a number of small bugs while playing. The most obvious one was that tutorials usually displayed a solid black rather than the animated demonstrations that were intended. This was supposed to have been fixed in a patch, but the issue persists for me even if I start a new game. Occasionally, loose clothing would fling around when the camera switched, a fairly common issue in many games. The voice lines and subtitles didn't always match, especially once I got to Act 2 and beyond. Recent patches claim to have fixed or at least improved this, but I already finished the game so I can't really confirm it. One of the quests would only work if you started the conversation at night, despite being available at any time of the day. That was fixed in a patch. When I first loaded the game on my Steam Deck, it defaulted to the Polish language for some reason, even though I'd already played it in English on my desktop. If you run into this issue, pick the fourth option on the main menu, switch to the second tab, change the first option to English, then apply the settings. Overall, the bugs I experienced were pretty minor, and many have been fixed in recent patches. You don't need to wait a year to play this one, unlike far too many other games released in recent years. The settings menu is decent for a AA release. It doesn't include some niceties like VRAM estimates, detailed descriptions, or an image preview, 
but there are plenty of options including DLSS, FSR, XESS, frame generation, and ultrawide support. One major complaint though is that the D-pad inexplicably doesn't work in the settings menu. This makes changing settings via controller frustrating because it's very easy to unintentionally change them as you move up and down with the analog stick. The Thaumaturge is an entertaining 15 to 35 hours of intrigue and slapping people around with demons. It's not going to win any Game of the Year awards, but it's also only $35. I feel like I got my money's worth and have no hesitation in recommending it if you're still interested after watching this review. That brings us back to the question, do they have what it takes to remake The Witcher 1? Personally, I'm cautiously optimistic. I wouldn't say this game fully proves it, but I like a lot of what I see. The experience gained by making the Thaumaturge will hopefully enable them to do even better with The Witcher. Remaking an existing game in a well-established IP should make story development much easier, and they'll have the support from CDPR as well. I'll definitely want to take a look around some when it comes out. Hmm. I want to look around some. I'm going to take a look around. I would also welcome a sequel to the Thaumaturge at some point down the line. They've built an interesting world, and I believe they could either continue the story or explore other historical events. I think Vikings in particular are fertile ground for Thaumaturges and Salutors. Have you played the Thaumaturge? What are your opinions on it? Let me know in the comments below with the like button. If you're craving more single player PC gaming content, here's another video you might enjoy. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, this is Poto Sniper, logging out.